Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Lego Movie video game. This video is going to focus on industry and audience for the video game. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying OCR GCSE Media Studies as it currently appears as a set text on that specification. The Lego Movie game was obviously created in relation and as a result of the Lego Movie itself. Warner Brothers was the company behind the Lego Movie and so their subsidiary Warner Brothers Games or Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment um, was responsible for creating and distributing the video game. Warner Brothers and their subsidiaries are further subsidiaries of a parent conglomerate company called AT&T and this means that they have budgets that often include billions of dollars, lots of resources, lots of facilities gives them the ability to make very high quality, high tech products. Being vertically integrated and diversified means that Warner Brothers can um, develop the video game, they can design it, they can publish it, they can distribute it and they can license it all themselves without having to outsource to other companies. Previously, Lego had worked with other video game companies like TT Fusion in order to make some video games for them, uh, like Lego Star Wars, and these had been big successes. So Warner Brothers, bought TT Fusion in 2007. Uh, this is an example of horizontal integration, so they purchased one of their competitors. Um, and this means that they um, are able to then incorporate that brand within their company. They can therefore use anything that TT Fusion has made in the past and also it makes it for Warner Brothers themselves as merchandise for their films. And this is a great way of getting extra profit from their products. This kind of horizontal integration is what has made Warner Brothers one of the biggest video game publishers in the world outside of the big three, Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo. Lego as a company obviously had to be involved in this process. So Warner Brothers had to form this synergetic partnership with them and get them to agree to give Warner Brothers the rights to the characters for both the movie and the video game. It means there's a huge pre-sold audience of people who already know the brand, who are already very familiar with it. Not just um, children, but also adults who've grown up with Lego as well. So this use of Lego toys added some nostalgic elements for a lot of audiences. And Lego's stipulation was that their designers would need to be involved in both the film and in the video game production. It was very important to them that the film and the video game, um, the blocks and the characters would operate the same way as blocks would in real life. And that meant that they had to program their computer software with every available block from the Lego universe. It was very important to Lego that anything that was built within the video game could also technically be built by people in real life. And so this focus on um, you know, attention to detail and making sure that they used blocks in that way um, as, as a person would if they were playing with Lego meant that the game operates in a slightly different way to normal video games. So a lot of video games now focus on extreme reality of graphics and this meant that actually now the Lego movie video game, the focus was on getting the, the blocks to move like blocks. Within the video game, there are 90 possible playable characters. This is a huge range of diverse playable characters. Often video games may come with a handful of playable characters and the diversity within those playable characters is not great. Whereas in the Lego movie game, people can choose from a huge number of different types of characters to play as. And this means that the video game is very relatable, it's easy to identify with, it includes a lot of audiences. They used lots of dialogue from the film within the video game to tie the two products together and that really helps to cross promote them. And because they used some particular cut scenes directly from the film itself, it meant that they included a lot of the voices from the original actors that played the voices uh, in the actual film. And so the use of these celebrity voices, people like Chris Pratt um, and uh, Morgan Freeman, etc., appearing in some of the cut scenes would have added that extra sense of intertextuality for audiences and again, some familiarity bringing in some of their fans. Whereas other Lego games had been more kind of platform based with a particular narrative and story, the Lego movie video game was slightly different in that it was an open world type game where audiences and players could explore a little bit more freely. Audiences found the game quite entertaining and quite funny. It had quite a lot of humour in it, which appealed to a wide range of audiences. And of course, the game was appealing and able to be played by a huge 
variety of ages, lots of children were able to play it. It's quite simple controls to be able to operate it, but also more experienced gamers were able to handle the game too. Because there were so many different worlds and environments to explore within the game, it offered a variety of escapist fantasies for audiences where they could go off into different worlds and different universes. The game's very accessible, you know, not only was it available on mobiles, touch screens, very easy tablets, but it was also available on consoles as well. So anyone from a very casual, inexperienced gamer to somebody with much more experience and skill could play the game. It was very accessible. And the game was available on a variety of platforms, including online gaming stores. So really reflecting this kind of rise in online convergent technology. They were also able to use Warner Brothers characters to create this kind of cross promotion for Warner Brothers. So for example, they included Wonder Woman and Batman who were part of the um, Warner Brothers um, uh, franchise. And so um, the use of Warner Brothers characters helped cross promote their other movies as well. So again, it's kind of creating this wholesale marketing for the Warner Brothers brand as well as the Lego brand. The game was very much focused on bright colours and fun, which again is going to engage particularly a youthful audience. Some of the content was locked and you had to progress through certain levels in order to unlock it, which gave players a sense of achievement and competition. There was also downloadable extra content or expansion packs such as the Wild West pack to keep players engaged and get them wanting more. Some audiences felt that the game was a little bit more dull than they had hoped for and actually said that it was a little bit repetitive. It was very important to both Lego and Warner Brothers that the game be very family friendly and have as low a Peggy rating as possible. So it actually got a Peggy rating of age seven and up. Um, and that was helpful because obviously Lego are a very family friendly brand and they want to keep their video game and any merchandise and marketing materials very family friendly as well. So obviously there's very little content in it that could be considered violent or more adult. The mobile version of the video game offered in-app purchases for audiences, which is very common now for video games. It's very um, popular way for companies to make money on mobile games, but not all audiences liked this. And in particular, because the game was played by a lot of children, a lot of parents found that their children were pestering them to pay extra for the downloadable extra content. The mobile game also took up over a gigabyte of space on people's mobile phones, and people found this quite frustrating. It's probably to do with the huge amount of playable characters and different levels that there were, and that all increases the size of the game. If you pre-ordered the game, you also got an extra minifigure with the game as well, which a lot of audiences liked. Lego sets obviously helped to market both the game and the film. Uh, there were um, Lego Land theme parks as well that also helped to promote the film and video game through their parks and rides. Lego stores also promoted and sold the game too. They also released a huge range of other merchandise, including soft toys, um, accessories for kids' bedrooms, t-shirts, clothing, etc. Funko Pop partnership happened as well. One of the social media competitions invited audiences to design their own figures, which could then eventually be featured in the video game. So that was my easy to understand guide to the Lego movie video game. Don't forget to check out my channel for other videos that might be relevant for you, including about the Lego movie itself. And if you've got any questions, just leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.